Welcome back to Film Don't Lie University. He's Brett Coleman. He's really good at watching NFL game film. I'm Chris Harris. I'm sitting here. And we're going to talk to you today about quarterbacks. He's also good at watching NFL game film, by the way. <laughs> we're we're going to talk about quarterbacks. And uh, the whole purposes of FDLU is to maybe try to weed out the nice-looking stats from the nice-looking players. And quarterback is a place where you can get really tricked by a nice run of big statted games because the NFL is such a passing league. Sometimes mediocre quarterbacks will fool you with a run of good play and then wind up biting you as soon as you rely on them. By the way, I think you might be watching this on Brett's channel, The Film Room. And if you are, come on over to Harris Football and subscribe to my channel. And if you're, if, if this, you're, this room you're in right now is my Harris Football channel, go over to The Film Room because Brett is awesome and his videos are incredible. Uh, Brett, I, I want to get into this stuff real quick, but the larger point is quarterback is a place where you can get fooled by numbers, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's probably the most inflated position in terms of numbers in the whole sport because it's it's easy. If, if he throws a dump off screen that goes for 70 yards, he's getting 70 yards of production when he really he didn't do that much. So yeah. it's, it's very easy to have inflated quarterback numbers. Two words, Blake Bortles. Remember that year from a couple couple seasons ago <laughs> where he wasn't playing all that well. He just kind of kept digging himself holes, and then in the end, the gravy train ran out. So today's topic, we're going to have a lot of quarterback topics here over the course of the next several several shows, but today's topic is an important one. It's the a quarterback's ability to read a play pre-snap, make an adjustment or not make an adjustment, and kind of continue a drive, make a score, make a play, Brett, I know it's something that you look for when you're evaluating quarterbacks, and we're going to talk about good players. We're going to talk about bad players, but in the end, what we care about is the next players. So let's start to talk about what it looks like when a quarterback's good at adjusting. Yeah, when you're watching a young quarterback, so this year, you know, when Josh Rosen gets on the field, or, or Baker Mayfield, or maybe even Lamar Jackson, or Josh Allen, or Josh, or, or you know, Darnold, anybody, any of these young quarterbacks, when you're watching them operate at the line of scrimmage, see if they operate like Cam Newton does here. And you can see him kind of motion Christian McCaffrey out wide, so he's got four by one. And nobody shadows McCaffrey, so you know it's it's probably not man coverage, because that would be a signal for man, which means it's likely zone. And because of all these bodies crowded around the line of scrimmage, there's potential for a zone pressure here. So again, when you're watching these young quarterbacks, see if they have answers for potential pressure. That's That's kind of... The main thing you look for in a young quarterback is in these tough situations on third down, do they have answers? And so Newton, he gives a little signal to McCaffrey here, basically saying like, hey, you're the hot receiver. I've only got two protectors on this side. If they bring an extra body, you're my guy. And so McCaffrey acknowledges that. And of course, they do bring two extra bodies on this zone pressure here. McCaffrey identifies it. He pivots. Cam's got two bodies in his face. He throws off platform hot to McCaffrey. Boom, 16, 17 yard gain. Uh, beating that blitz. So that's a big thing we look for for a young quarterback. And I don't know about you, Chris, but if, I, I like to see veterans do that. But to me, seeing the rookies do that this year is going to be even more interesting. That's it. I mean, this is a we see this kind of thing all, all, the, all the time. The NFL is an audible league now, but are you checking to the right thing based on what you see? And obviously in this play, in this case, Cam Newton is. It's a great example. And if you can punish a blitz, they're going to blitz less. That's what's happening here. Cam Newton's given the message to the Bucks, like, okay, <laughs> I know what to do when you do this. Let me show you Carson Wentz, a, a younger quarterback, and this is the fifth game of his second season. And and again, I, you see this check with me stuff all the, all the, all the, all the time, right? You, and so it's not a big surprise that, that Carson Wentz is checking from what I assume this is going to be a handoff to Kenyon Barner, but he sees the Cardinals have a stacked box and it looks like what that's the offensive left side where they're showing pressure and I think maybe most importantly he knows who Justin Bethel is and he knows that his name isn't Patrick Peterson so when he gets <laughs> this look right and he, he goes oh is that Justin Bethel against Torrey Smith cool I'm gonna make a check great what I like to see from a young quarterback in this case this is pre potential MVP Carson Wentz this is week five of last year I like that the check that he checks to is a deep shot. I like that the coaches trust him enough 
to say, you know what, if you get this look and you think there's pressure coming and you think you can pick up that pressure, I want you to take a shot. Why do I care about that for fantasy? Because that, to me, feels more sustainable. Because if the quarterback diagnoses what's going on and is allowed, is given the freedom to take that deep shot, that's going to persist throughout the season, and I'm going to continue to get value from him throughout the season. So love that it's a check and that he's capable of doing, but love that it's a check to a deep shot. Yeah, I, I was doing a, a Carson Wentz episode last year, and I, I tweeted something out that people took maybe the wrong way, where I said that his tape was Aaron Rodgers-esque this season. That's why he was an MVP candidate. This was one of the plays that made me think that. Because when you when you think about Aaron Rodgers and you think about Okay, he's he makes a check, and you just kind of think to yourself, it's Aaron. He's got him. As soon as he's making a check at the line, you think <laughs> he's he's got him. I, I don't know what the play is, yeah. but he's got him. And Carson's kind of in that territory now where he sees the safety is not rolling deep when he's making that, that, uh, that hard count. So he's trying to see what they're in, and as soon as he sees the safety staying short, like they're playing short here, he, he knows whether it's man or zone. He's got Torrey Smith one-on-one outside. All he has to do is just survive in the pocket for this route to develop, and he's got him. So he checks to the mesh concept to kind of bait the safeties into staying underneath to handle all these crosses and overs and, and everything like that. He's baiting the safeties to stay, to stay shallow and to do what they were planning on doing, and he's basically using it against them, saying, you gave me what I wanted, here's my throw, I'm surviving in the pocket, I'm leading Torrey Smith out front with a great ball, 50 yard, uh, 59 yard touchdown, Thank you. Goodbye. I got you. And it, it, it speaks to the confidence he has. And just like you were saying, the authority to check deep, he has the confidence to check deep, which might be even more important. You know, I, I like my quarterback to be aggressive in that way. And man, Carson Wentz, he's so he's, true. He's sec- second year in the league, he's already one of the best doing it because of this. It's, it's oh, insane. Yeah. I mean, he. Talk about aggressive. I mean, Carson Wentz is not... He's in the wrong offense for himself, to be honest, if we're talking about Carson Wentz. Like, it's this pure West Coast offense, and here's this dude who just wants to fire, hang onto the ball and fire. It's, it's, but it works. It's great. And I agree. When I saw this, I was like, dude, I like Carson Wentz a lot. I want, I want shares of him. Um, let's go on to Russell Wilson, another good one. And this is, again, kind of a basic check, but so undervalued. And if you see your young quarterback on a third and five be able to make this kind of check where motion motion so often in the NFL and the offense exists to reveal the defense's plans. And sometimes the defense is better at concealing what they're doing than other times. But in this case, it gives Russell Wilson all the information he knows. Take me through this play where Wilson's able to get the chains moving. Yeah, you know, number one, the, the, the biggest factor in production, not just for quarterbacks, but for receivers, running backs, tight ends, everything, is can the offense sustain drives? Can they convert on third down so that they can get more snaps? The more snaps you get, the more productive you're going to be. That's just basic math. So the number one job of the quarterback is to keep the offense moving. Uh, you know, On these third and five situations where he's empty and the Eagles are giving him man coverage, can he keep the offense moving and give himself and his skill position players more opportunities to be productive? So we see here, you know, he's putting the tight end in motion. He's got Malcolm Jenkins following that tight end, which is a signal for man coverage. The Eagles love man coverage, on, especially against empty on third down. So he, he kind of knows from, 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 film, uh, from film study what he's going to get. Um, but because of that motion, he knows it's man coverage. So he kind of gives a little uh, tap on the helmet to his receivers, basically saying like, hey, it's two by two backside. You're running a rub concept. Let's get this first down. They're making it easy on us. The receivers acknowledge that with a little helmet tap of their own. So everybody is on the same page. Everybody knows what the play is. Wilson knows he's got him before the ball's even snapped. And of course he does, delivers a good ball, right on time, in rhythm, moves the chains, keeps everything working downfield. And the Seahawks actually won this game with not great offensive personnel overall. But because they have a quarterback who can keep the chains moving, and they have a quarterback who can give everybody more chances to be productive, overall it it raises the productivity of an otherwise very weak offense. So again, when you're watching these young quarterbacks this year, if you see them giving signals to their receivers and using motion checks to decipher defenses, pay attention to that because that means they they have a chance to be pretty good. Hey gang, I just want to take a break and say thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring Film Don't Lie University today. They are a great partner and they've got a great promotion if you've ever thought about trying DraftKings. They will give you basically the month of September at a great discount. All you have to do is click the link below me in the notes to this show. 
Go on over to DraftKings and make a first time deposit of $10 or more. Eligibility restrictions apply. See the website for details. But once you do that, you will be entered into four contests the first four weeks in September, which is a $20 value. So it's a really good deal if this is the season you were thinking about trying DraftKings. I play every week, Brett plays every week. We have some trash talking between us for sure. So if you've ever wanted to try it out, this is a great opportunity. Click that link and thank you so much DraftKings for sponsoring. Now let's get back to some film. All right, welcome back everybody. Let's dive right back into this with some maybe less than great examples of pre-snap adjustments <laughs> or pre-snap reads. And this is going to be a direct contrast to the Wilson play we just looked at. This is Case Keenum in the NFC Championship game when they got throttled by the Eagles defense. The same Eagles defense that Wilson beat, and they're in the same formation. They're in empty formation pre-snap, and the Eagles, this is on first and ten, it's not on third and five. The Eagles are giving them a pretty clear cover six zone look. It could be cover three, but most likely it's cover six because that free safety is shaded a little bit towards the strong side of the formation. So... He's got a smash on, on the front side and dagger on the back side, uh, smash concepts and dagger concepts, which just, it's not something you want to run against cover six. You might be able to get away with it on cover three, but you, you need a really strong, accurate throw, but it's really not something you want to test on cover six. Uh, on, on cover six, the best places to attack are either in that backside seam with like a nod post or a seam route or, or something kind of like that, maybe uh, something coming from the other side or if you want to attack the, the short, shallow zone over the middle, because there's only four underneath zone defenders, that's something you can hit too. But this concept is not something you want to dial up against cover six. So why he doesn't check out of it, I have no idea. He kind of pulls the exact opposite of Wilson, where he's got a bad play on here. He's got a really bad play, and he doesn't get his offense out of it. That's a big part of being a, a franchise quarterback in the league, a productive quarterback in the league, is knowing when to get out of a bad play. And he does not do that. So post-snap, nothing's open because, of course, nothing's going to be open. There's no prayer that this play would work against this coverage. And so he gets flushed from pressure because, again, the defensive line knows, hey, it's not a run play. We'll just tee off on this dude. He gets flushed from pressure. Nothing's open quickly. And it's an incompletion. So it's a good example of something never, ever, ever having a chance to work and the quarterback not doing enough to help out his team and get them out of it. I don't know what you saw in this play, but that's what I was thinking when I saw it. Right, so what I would take away sort of from the top level is that a lot of times people who want to defend a quarterback will say, what's he supposed to do? Nobody's open. What's he supposed to do? Where is he supposed to go? Nobody got open. It must be a, a failing of the receiving core. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say with the Vikings, it's probably not a failure of the receiving core. It's a pretty good receiving core. And even if it weren't, sometimes, as you say, the quarterback in his head knows what play he's got. And if the routes that he's been telling his receivers to run for this play aren't going to work about against what he's presented with, it's going to wind up being a problem. And, of course, in the end, this game winds up snowballing. Uh, let me take you to Andy Dalton. And so much of what the Bengals do is check with me. They don't have the incredible, prodigious, athletic talent at quarterback to just kind of do what they do, and it doesn't matter what the defense does, we're going to get it done. No. In fact, much of what Dalton does is pre-snap reading, and to be honest, he's pretty good at it. So I'm not even going to say, hey, this play I'm going to show you here with A.J. Green in the slot is some indication that Andy Dalton's bad at pre-snap reads, but I think for when you're watching other quarterbacks, you can sort of come to conclusions if they miss things like this. And for me, this is a quarterback really wanting to force the ball to his best receiver and not having him run the best route for what he sees. I, I don't know that the Steeler defense could telegraph that they're double teaming A.J. Green any more than they're doing here. <laughs> they've, they've got two guys standing kind of right in front of him, and one of them's, really both of them have that inside technique. So once again, as I just said with the Keenum play, in his mind, Andy Dalton knows I've got an in-breaking route here for A.J. Green. At the very least, with guys playing on A.J. Green's inside shoulder, he should be saying, well, let's adjust and why don't you run an outbreaking route instead? And, and so this actually turns into also a bad post-snap read for sure because once he realizes the safety doesn't move, once he realizes it is just a simple double team, he can't throw the ball to that route. It winds up being a disaster. But he really should have, in, in, the, in the end, he should have kind of believed what the defense was telling him and adjusted A.J. Green's route. Yeah, I mean, if, if A.J. Green ran a post-corner here, that's probably a touchdown. Uh, right. it's, it's simple as that. Like, he kind of got greedy a little bit seeing the linebacker was there over the top of him. 
but he didn't realize, like, no, the Steelers are not going to put a linebacker on A.J. Green in the red zone. Like, of course he's going to be double teamed. So, if anything, he he should have used that against them, used A.J. Green to kind of ride inside and then snap it off outside and then just kind of put the ball high and away above the pylon where he can go do A.J. Green things. And he kind of got greedy, got got his hands in the cookie jar, and he he paid for it with an incompletion that maybe should have been an interception. So it's just it's it's a bad pre snap read reading leading to a bad post snap read, which is uh, it's kind of a theme when you're when you're watching these quarterbacks that maybe are inconsistent production wise, and a similar thing with Deshaun Kaiser who he was consistent production wise but it was consistently bad, <laughs> <laughs> and you know the, the the thing that I'm looking at on on this play, the the key here is look at the safety capping over the top of David Njoku. It kind of looks like a too high coverage. I can understand why he thought it was too high, but it really wasn't too high. And he needs to identify that cap on Njoku because if the safety is showing the cap on Njoku, meaning basically declaring like, hey, I'm taking this guy in man coverage, that means that at least one of these linebackers is not covering Njoku and at least one of them is blitzing him. So he needs to understand that. He needs to understand, like, I'm going to have guys in my face, but also I've got a big 6'4 tight end that runs a 4'640 and can jump like 38 inches in the air. I've got a really big body with a whole bunch of green grass in front of him that this little itty-bitty safety is going to have to match up with in the open field. That's my answer. And this is fourth and ten, but even if they blitz, like, that is the answer that you that guys like Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers will find. They'll see that safety cap. They'll throw a little pop route. They'll get him open quickly. He'll split the safeties, and he'll get a touchdown out of it. And Kaiser, he and he didn't do that, and he took a sack. So it's the difference between a young quarterback who maybe doesn't know what he's doing yet and a veteran quarterback that does. Yeah, I mean, does he ever even look at him? I mean, he's just <laughs> he's focused so much on those guys on the left who have three three defenders on him. So again, I think you could say it's a bad post snap read. Uh, he never winds up throwing the ball, but yeah, it's just in the end you're sort of looking at the wrong place, kid. I'm I'm 100% with you. The last one we wanted to show for the purposes of of a bad pre-snap read is Kirk Cousins in his old duds, and I'm gonna say like to start with, this is a very good play by the corner, but the reason he's able to make a really good play is he is the coverage. It's it's a coverage where you're going to be able to slough off. You've got help, in other words. There's a lot of defensive backs, and it's a pretty thorough zone on that side. The, 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 sink, the high safety is there to help out, right? So when Niles Paul turns to the middle of the field there, Williams can leave him to the single high safety. Not, the, Paul is going to get covered by that safety, and therefore Williams can slough off, and that, and that winds up being the key because then you know, the high safety is shading toward that side. So pre-snap, I think, you can disagree or agree with me, Brett, but I think we would want to see that the high safety is shading to that side, but I need to know that there's going to be way too many bodies on that side of the field to throw this pass. Yeah, if this was any other coverage where the safety was a little bit further in the deep middle, this might work. It might actually be a huge play. But because it's quarters coverage on that side... The corner has the freedom to fall off and aggressively yeah. play this Absolutely. this pick. So he needs to understand that when I've got a safety shading over there, don't throw that route. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's <laughs> it's the play we're looking at this and you're saying, Kirk, no, please, no, 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 God, please, I told you not to. And he did it anyway. So it's 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 a bad pre-snap read leading to an even worse post-snap read, and uh, it's I understand he's making $30 million a year, but this is the kind of stuff that we look for in young quarterbacks that we don't want them to do. So it's 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 tough to watch, but it's something that we need to watch because we need to gain an understanding of it so that we can identify it in other quarterbacks and uh, hopefully understand who to avoid. Right. And so in the end, this stuff, this I love the way you put that, the no, 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 oh my goodness, bad. Like, I think everybody has that instinct when they're watching what turns out to be kind of a crusher interception or a, or a bad decision. And yet, sometimes I think we think, oh, it's the receiver made a mistake, or he just didn't see him or whatever. So much of it is about recognizing what the defense is giving you beforehand. And hopefully this is the beginning of you as viewers, as you're watching games on Sunday, to get a sense of when a play goes bad. Sometimes it's before the snap ever happens. We hope you've enjoyed this. Once again, we hope that you would 
Uh, if you're watching on my channel, please go subscribe to The Film Room because it is fantastic. Brett has an attention for detail unparalleled. It's great. If you're watching this on Brett's channel, I'm okay too. I mean, I'm fine. You can <laughs> check it out on Harris He's Football. decent. <laughs> I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel too. It's a younger channel, so it needs your subscription. We're going to have great content for you all year. And also, we're going to keep going on this quarterback stuff with FDLU. Thanks for watching. Thank you.